Hola, hola, hola. Hoy, otra vez, vamos a ser más subjuntivo. Today, again, we're doing more subjunctive, so hopefully you are getting más cómodo, more comfortable. Um, today, we're going to be doing impersonal expressions. Y voy a hacer algo un poco diferente. We're going to do something a little bit different. So if you have your cheat sheet, it'll make it a lot easier. No worries if you don't. No te preocupes. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to review all the different types of subjunctive that we've gone over. So one of the first ones that we were introduced to was the present subjunctive volition. And what that means is it communicates a wish on the part of one person for another person to do something. So we use the subjunctive when we are speaking of volition, when we want to communicate something that we wish for somebody else and common um, parts that go with this are aconsejar, I advise you, decir que, I say that, desear que, yo deseo que, tengan buen fin de semana, I wish you have a good weekend, insistir en que, to insist, pedir que, to order, to ask, querer que, is to want, es importante que, so this is volition. And it's not to say that other ones couldn't be used with this, but these are just popular ones that would go with volition. The next one we learned was emotion. And this is used in Spanish after verbs of emotion in which speakers express their feelings about a subject. And ones that usually go with the present subjunctive are alegrarse de que, es absurdo que, es extraño que, es increíble que. Gustar que, me gusta que, I like that, no me gusta que, okay, and so those ones go together. The one we're working on today is your impersonal expressions, and they take the form of S plus K plus adjective. These types of generalizations trigger the subjunctive unless they express certain defects or observations. So that's what we're going to get into today, and you usually see it with S bueno que, S malo que, S importante que, S absurdo que, and many of these can cross over into present subjunctive emotion, volition, or impersonal expressions. I just really wanted to break down for you the one that we have gone over already. So with that being said, today we're going to start our lesson out with a listening and reading activity. So I already have it on your cheat sheet, but if you don't have your cheat sheet right in front of you, um, I also have it here on the screen, but I wanted you to listen in Spanish as well. So vamos a comenzar con eso, and afterwards we will deconstruct it. Andrés es un joven bonaerense que sueña con jugar fútbol profesionalmente en el futuro. La doctora Blanco le explica cómo cuidarse bien durante sus intensos entrenamientos. Quiero jugar con los albicelestes algún día, doctora. Es importante que entrene mucho y quiero hacerlo de la manera más sana posible. ¿Qué debo hacer? Andrés, es bueno que estés pensando en tu salud. Primero, es necesario que me expliques un poco más sobre tus actividades y cualquier síntoma que tengas. Es cierto que practico mucho. A veces es necesario que levante pesas y haga otros ejercicios por dos horas al día antes de un partido importante con mi liga. No tengo muchos problemas, pero es verdad que a veces me duele mucho la espalda. Eres muy joven, pero es malo que tengas tanto dolor de espalda. Es mejor que te tomemos una radiografía para ver si tienes alguna lesión. Es posible que no sea nada importante, pero es importante que nos aseguremos. ¿Tienes tiempo ahora para tomarte la radiografía? Por supuesto que tengo tiempo. Aunque es improbable que haya un problema serio, quiero estar seguro. Gracias, doctora. Es mejor que no te preocupes, Andrés. Creo que tienes muchas posibilidades de tener un gran futuro jugando con los albicelestes. Espera aquí unos minutos. Okay, so, muy bien. Andrés es un joven bonanerse que sueña con jugar fútbol profesionalmente en el futuro. Andrés es a young so, bonaerense, 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 
means una persona de buenas R's, a person that is from Buenos Aires, right? So a person from Buenos Aires, Argentina, just like we would call someone from Paris, a Parisian, just like someone from Madrid is un madrileno, madrilena, someone that lives in Madrid. So la doctora Blanco le explica cómo cuidarse bien durante sus intensos entrenamientos. So how can explained how he can take care of himself um, while during his intense training session. So vamos a comenzar otra vez just so that we can look at the subjunctive and see a couple of different things where the, the clause was used, es importante que, but um, maybe the subjunctive wasn't used. So quiero jugar con los albicietes algún día. I want to play with los albicietes. This would be a local team. Someday, doctora. Es importante que entrene. It's important to train. This is the subjunctive. Mucho y quiero hacerlo de la manera más sana posible. I want to do it the healthiest way possible. ¿Qué debo hacer? What does that mean? ¿Qué debo hacer? What should I do? La respuesta de la doctora. Andres, es bueno que estés pensando en tu salud. It's good that you're thinking about your health. Primero, es necesario que me expliques un poco más sobre tus actividades. First, it's necessary that you explain to me. So again, here is the subjunctive. I forgot to underline this one and put this in italics. Es necesario que, okay? it's necessary that you explain to me a little about your activities and which symptoms you have. So all of that actually is in the, the subjunctive. Andres, I try to underline es cierto que practico mucho. So this is my first example where, even though it says es cierto que, um, in this context, when you're expressing truth, a fact, or an observation, the subjunctive does not need to be used. So he's saying es cierto que practico mucho. It is certain that I practice a lot. He didn't use the subjunctive because he knows this is a fact that he practices a lot. Y a veces es necesario que levante pesa. So, and now he did use it because he said sometimes it's necessary that I lift weights. Okay, so he's back to using the subjunctive again. But his first sentence was a fact, right? An observation, something that he does, the truth. And so he didn't need to use it. Okay, haga otros ejercicios por dos Horas al día antes de un partido importante con mi liga. So it's necessary that I lift weights and do other exercises two hours a day before the game, important game in my league. No tengo muchos problemas, pero es verdad que, so this is another saying that will trigger you to use the present tense. Es cierto que means it's certain that. Es verdad que means it's true that. So if it's certain or you're true, you're not going to use the subjunctive. So es verdad que, Mm. Okay, so now I'm really going to throw you a loop. If he would have just said, es verdad que me duele mucho la espalda. Okay, never mind. So, pero es verdad que a veces me duele mucho la espalda. So, sometimes it's true that my back hurts me. Again, this is in the present tense. So, it's true that and it's certain that he used the present tense and not the subjunctive. Dr. Doctora Blanco. Eres muy joven, pero es mal que tengas tanto dolor de espalda. You're really young, and it's too, it's not good that you have a lot of pain in your back, or so much pain in your back. Es mejor que te tomemos una radiografía para ver si tienes alguna lesión. So it's best that we take a x-ray in order to see if you have some kind of lesion. Es posible que no sea nada grave. It's possible that it's not anything serious. Grave means es muy grave. It's very serious. No es muy grave. It's not very serious. Pero es importante que nos aseguremos, that we assure ourselves. ¿Tienes tiempo ahora para tomarte la radiografía? Do you have time right now to take an x-ray? Por supuesto que tengo tiempo. Of course I have time. Ayunque es improbable que haya un problema serio, quiero estar seguro. Gracias, doctora. Although it is improbable that I have a serious problem, I want to be sure. So, es improbable que haya, that means it's improbable, and you're going to use the subjunctive. Es mejor que no te preocupes, Andres. It's better that you don't worry. 
Creo que tienes muchas posibilidades de tener un gran futuro jugando con los albicilastes. Espera aquí unos minutos. So it's better that you don't worry. I believe that you have a lot of possibility to have a great future playing with the albicilastes. Wait here a couple minutes. Okay, so numero uno. Es necesario que Andres Blank ejercicio todos los días si quiere ser jugador profesional. In this context, we're going to use the subjunctive because I'm saying es necesario que. So es necesario que Andres. Oh, I didn't put my answers here. So I will write them in now. Es Andres. Remember, in the subjunctive, you put it in the yo form. You drop the o and then you add the opposite ending. So I would say es necesario que Andres haga ejercicio todos los días because hacer in the yo form is hago. You drop well, you drop the O and then you add your opposite ending. So, aga, agas, aga, agamos. Okay, so this next one I really want us to pay attention because it says, es cierto, okay? And so that means it's certain that Andres is joven y muy activo. So, this is a fact. It's certain that Andrew is young and active. So, do we need to use the subjunctive here? No, we don't because it's a fact. Okay, es bueno que Andres y la doctora Blanco, blank de que su dolor de espalda no sea nada serio. So, it is good that Andres y la doctora Blanco say, this is a reflexive verb, and we're going to use the subjunctive because it said es bueno que, we're going to use the opposite, aseguren, assure themselves. Y número cuatro, es probable que algún día Andres jugar con los albicelestes. So, juego in the yo form. You drop the O, you add the opposite endings. Juega. Y es tu respuesta. Okay, so a couple of points about expressing impersonal in expressions using the subjunctive. Thankfully, the subjunctive doesn't change. You put it in the yo form, you drop the O, and you add the opposite endings. That's something we've been doing for the last two weeks. Um, this is a, just a little bit different to pay attention to the fact that um, impersonal expressions in Spanish take the form of S plus adjective and translate as it is plus adjective in English. So, es bueno que would be it is good that. Es absurdo que it is absurd that. Es malo que it's bad that. These type of generalizations trigger the subjunctive unless they express certainty, facts, observations. So example, es verdad que a veces me duele mucho la espalda. It's true that sometimes my back hurts. So in this context, just like I showed you in the example, es verdad que, anytime you see es verdad que, es cierto que, like I have highlighted over here in red, you will not use the subjunctive, okay? So a small little fact, um, you know, there's always all these devils in the details when you're talking about Spanish and these irregular, when you use it and when you don't. Um, and obviously, you know, I say this to you every time my best advice is just to go practice and use it. Um, that's the best experience you're going to get is going out into the world and trying to use your Spanish the best you can and learning from experience of how you say something. So when in doubt, just go for it and you will be fine. Um, and if you're wrong every now and again, just keep moving forward. Eventually, you'll get it. Okay, so vamos a practicar un poquito más. Estamos hablando de el bienestar. We're talking about well-being in este capítulo. So escucha la información sobre la gripe. Luego indica la frase correcta. So next then, you guys are going to listen to the information. So I'm going to give you guys a little reading. And then you are going to fill in the blank with the word that I am saying. So this will be a really great listening activity. So you are looking for the word to fill in in the blank. En invierno es normal que haya un número elevado de casos de gripe. Si tienes gripe, es necesario que limites el contacto con otras personas, porque así puedes evitar contagiar a otros con la enfermedad. La gripe tiene muchos síntomas y también muchos tratamientos. 
Si tienes fiebre, es importante que tomes suficiente agua porque la fiebre puede causar deshidración. Para el dolor de cabeza, que es común con el gripe, es posible que te ayude tomar aspirina. Cuando te duele la garganta, es bueno que tomes té con miel. Estas estrategias pueden aliviar los síntomas un poco, pero en general es importante que descanses mucho cuando tienes gripe. Trata de mantener una actitud positiva. Y no olvides que es cierto que la mayoría de los, los casos de gripe no son serias, no son serios. En unos días te sentirás mejor. Okay, so hopefully you guys, it wasn't too hard. I try to read a little bit slow um, and not too fast, but if you're overwhelmed, definitely listen to it again. The more you listen to the language, the more you're going to get an ear for it. So our first sentence, numero uno, si tienes gripe, es necesario que limites el contacto con otras personas. So if you have the flu, it's necessary to limit the contact with other persons. Perfecto. Número dos, si tienes fiebre, if you have a fever, es importante que tomes suficiente agua, that you drink sufficient agua. Número tres, para el dolor de cabeza, es posible que te ayude a tomar aspirina. If you have a headache, it's possible that taking aspirin will help you. Número cuatro, cuando te duele la garganta, es bueno que tomes té con miel. Muy bien. Número cinco, en general, es importante que descanses mucho cuando tienes gripe. Y número seis, Normalmente es cierto que la mayoría de los casos de gripe no son serios. So normally it's true that the majority of cases, flu cases, are not serious. En general es importante que descanses mucho cuando tienes gripe. In general it's important that you rest a lot when you have the flu. How'd you do? Es difícil. It's hard to listen for one word in an entire paragraph, pero um, el proceso es importante a aprender. It's an important part of the learning process. All right, vamos a continuar con más consejos. So, escribe recomendaciones para las siguientes personas y situaciones. Usas las expresiones impersonales. You are going to write recommendations for the following people. So I'm giving you an example for one, but when you go to do your tarea, necesitas, pienso que escribir tres. You might need to write three. No, no estoy segura. I'm not sure. Um, pero yo doy un ejemplo. I give an example for each one of them. So numero uno, dice un mamá con tres hijos que tiene gripe al mismo tiempo. So necesito un momento. You don't need that part. Okay, so a mom with three kids who has the flu at the same time, what could I say to her? Yo es mi adviso, uh, mi consejo, porque yo soy un mamá con hijos jóvenes, es importante que ella pida por ayuda. So my advice for her, it's important that she asks for help. Um, pero hay un montón de consejos. There are so many consejos that you could give this mama. Okay, so numero dos, un estudiante universi universitario que vive en la residencia estudiantil y se resfría con mucha frecuencia. So this is a university student that lives in the student residence and gets sick with frequency, so they're often sick. What kind of advice could we give them? ¿Es necesario que el estudiante se lave los manos frecuentemente? It's necessary that the student washes his hands frequently. ¿Es necesario que el estudiante coma bien dieta, that they eat a good diet? ¿Es necesario que el estudiante limite contacto con otros 
maybe limits contact with others. So these are some ejemplos para ustedes. Número tres, una estudiante de medicina que trabaja muchas horas y tiene mucho estrés. A medical student that works a lot of hours and has a lot of stress. Mi consejo, my advice, es urgente que ella tome una siesta. It's urgent that she takes a nap. Pero hay un montón de consejos. There's a lot of advice that we can give. Those are just some. Un profesor que tiene dolor de la cabeza casi todos los días. A professor that has a headache almost every day. Es necesario que él haga la meditación. No sé. Quizás él... Es necesario que él duerma más, that he sleeps more. Número cinco, un atleta que se entrena para los Juegos Olímpicos. An athlete that is training for the Olympics. Es importante que él mantenga su salud. It's important that he maintains his health. <coughs> Y número seis, los padres de un bebé que tiene infecciones frecuentes de oído. Parents that have a baby with ear infections frequently. Es necesario que comuniquen con su doctor frecuentemente. So I said it's necessary that they communicate with their doctor frequently. Okay, when you guys go do it, you'll have two more that you have to do. Pero hay muchísimo. There are a lot. Pero espero que ustedes comprendan mejor. I hope that you all understand better. I just used the subjunctive, um, this lesión. But if you don't, no pasa nada. Puedes mandarme un email. Mándame un email. Send me an email. Um, puedo hacer una lesión contigo. I'm happy to do lo a solo lesson with you. Um, es complicado. La vida es complicada. Español es complicado. So pregúntame. Ask me questions. It's complicated. Um, um, and we only have uh, a little bit of time left in este semestre. So now is the time to reach out if you need to. Okay. Espero que tengan buen día. Nos vemos pronto. Ciao.